What is up and welcome to another edition of the Mile High Hoops podcast. As always, I am your host, Zach Bai. And as always, I appreciate you spending a sliver of your busy day with me here on the pod, reacting to yet another Denver dub. The Denver Nuggets are a locomotive at full speed right now. Full speed and not even playing at full strength. Think about that combination. Think about that intersection. For two games in a row... Uh, the Nuggets against Portland over the weekend shut down Jokic and Jamal on Monday night against Memphis. They shut down uh, Jamal and Aaron Gordon. So kind of taking turns and resting some veteran players. Um, I think Jamal stuff is precautionary. Um, you know, rolled his ankle a little bit late in the game last week. Has dealt with some shin splints. And it's just like there's, there's, um, there's too much to lose at this point and so close to the end of the season. Um, we are, we are like, We're here, guys. I mean, we have 10 games left in the season. We have 10 games left in the season at the time of recording, which is Tuesday, March 26th. I'm thrilled to be here. Sorry I missed you guys uh, last week. Shout out to Jake Shapiro, who guest hosted. Um, Just had too much going on. Had to be downtown um, going live for my radio show at 2 o'clock. We usually uh, record these, you know, 1, 1 1.15 in the afternoon here in the studio uh, visually so they can air on our social channels. So it just didn't work out. But I appreciate um, Jake uh, pinch hitting for me. Um, so a couple things that I want to uh, cover here, and most of them are big picture stuff. They don't have a lot to do with the actual, um, breaking down of the games themselves, because let's face it. If you watch the game on Monday night, it was unserious. I mean, Memphis is freaking bad. They are really bad. What a season from hell for the Memphis Grizzlies who have already been eliminated from the playoffs are 24 and 48. Um, they're just a bad team. And when they don't have great competitive spirit, well, It looks like it did uh, on Monday night. So I'm not going to get in the trenches of the actual game, but I do think there's some big picture stuff to take away uh, from uh, the last couple games. And the one thing I I, want to give the Nuggets so much credit for, because it's funny, man, like, you know, we, we used to have certain conversations a lot with the Denver Nuggets that we just don't have anymore. Nikola Jokic. It wasn't too many years ago where Jokic's up and down inconsistency was maddening, okay? Uh, where it'd be a triple double on a Tuesday, you saw what he was capable of, and then it'd just be like a lackluster, ho hum type of uh, of, of uh, effort two nights later, three nights later. And eventually you just stop having those conversations because the guy turns into the same version of himself every single night. And now when he, he does have some sort of game like that it's a one off and it's weird and we were we we look at it like strangely um another example with the nuggets michael porter junior's health we simply don't even talk about it anymore it's totally in the background you can't even see it so far in the background because eventually if you just show up every day um and you just bring your homework into school every day right um you stop getting patted on the head right like that that's that, that that's what happens to the good students. You don't get the credit for bringing in homework because that's just the expectation. It's the kid who doesn't bring in his homework and then he brings it in two days in a row and it's like, oh, you did it, right? Um, good job. So you, the, the Nuggets have multiple splintered conversations that we just don't really have anymore. And um, one of them is losing to bad teams. It was as recent as three years ago where this was a bugaboo with the Denver Nuggets where you did not know uh, what version of the team you were getting on a night-to-night basis, especially when they were playing losing teams. Man, I remember being in the building uh, for so many of these. It was like the Atlanta Hawks were the worst team in the league. They'd come into Denver and win. The Knicks were one of the worst teams in the league, and they'd come into Denver and win. Um, it was the it was the Sixers when they were doing the whole tanking process thing, and Bede wasn't even playing. The Sixers came in to Denver and win. And there's, there's so many examples of it over the years. Um, and it used to drive someone like me crazy. You know what their record is right now? And I want to talk about it, give them credit, and shine light on this because I don't want it to just brush it under the rug like it's no big deal. And it was illuminating against a team like Portland who started five rookies on Friday night. It was illuminating, illuminating against a team like Memphis who's just bad and banged up and dealing with the Memphis stuff. Um, the competitive spirit even when guys aren't playing, all right, they could have lost that game in Portland the other night, against Portland the other night. They didn't. They, 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 there's a scenario where you lose that game to, to Memphis, and you can say, well, no, that was never going to happen. I don't know. It used to. You know what their record is against teams under 500 this season? It's remarkable. 
20, 25 opportunities against teams that have lost more games than they've won, below 500. 25 of those. You know what their record is in those 25 games? 24 wins and one loss. That is remarkable. They deserve credit for that because we talk about the marathon that is the NBA season and the draconian nature of the schedule. It's exhausting. There should be some losses built in there that you just say, want to know what? Chalk it up to a schedule loss. Chalk it up to the NBA. Just just the NBA being the NBA. 24-1? and one? I mean, that is wild. No one has a better record uh, in the Western Conference against um, losing teams. In fact, no one in the NBA has a better record. Boston has played more games against losing teams because they play in the Eastern Conference and there's just more losing teams over there. So they're 26-2. and two. That's still not a better winning percentage than 24-1. and one. That is remarkable, and I just absolutely love it. Only one overtime game, by the way, for the Denver Nuggets this year. Just one. Uh, which I think is unusual. You have teams like the Kings who have played in six of them. Um, and that was the loss against Phoenix, right? And that's one of the two losses since the All-Star break. The Denver Nuggets have played 17 games since the All-Star break, and they're 15-2. and two. Let that sink in. They are just on a roll right now. And, it, it, you know, and you think about the two losses. And they come to mind because there's only two of them. You lose to Phoenix in a game where you played with the game, stormed all the way back in the fourth quarter, going to overtime, and Durant and Beal went crazy in the OT. Durant specifically. The other game, what was it? We remember it, because there's only been two of them. Dallas Mavericks on ABC a couple Sundays back, where Kyrie Irving hits a running left-handed hook shot on Nikola Jokic to win the game. This, this is where we're at with this basketball team, you guys. And... I am just more bullish or as bullish as I have been this whole time that we're, we are going to have a parade. We're going to have a parade this summer. We're, that's going to happen. Uh, and, and I'm repeating myself, and I'm about to do it again with an analogy, so just prepare yourself. But I have, in seven years, never talked about a Denver sports team like the Denver Nuggets. And in seven years, I have never talked about a Denver athlete with the same tone as Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic, what we are seeing right now is it, we try to repackage our words to make something old sound new again. But we run out of adjectives when describing this guy. The role that he is on, the season that he is having, once again, favored to win the league's MVP. He nearly had a triple-double again on Monday night. All right, 29 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, had 30, 14, and 11 in the game before that against the New York Knicks, all right, uh, in a blowout win. Uh, 35, 6, and 16 the game before that. Like, what Jokic is doing, and he's doing it in so many different ways. You're seeing, like, these nights, like on Monday night, where, he, and Michael Malone talked about this after the game, taking joy and bringing the young guys along. Almost like using the Memphis Grizzlies as a, as a, a test mice of experimentation with bringing along new players and young players on the fly during an NBA game. We cannot ever take this player for granted. And I'm not even talking about Denver Nuggets fans, although that is doubly true, but I'm talking about NBA fans. If you are a game, a fan of the game of basketball, you have to love Nikola Jokic. He is greatness personified. He is the epitome of efficiency. And when we look at it every single day, we can have a tendency to take our eye off the ball. And I made this promise to myself, and I'm going to uh, use an analogy that I've made through the years with Nikola Jokic. It's the Rocky Mountains themselves, the largest mountain range in North America. And maybe if you're from Colorado, you're just used to seeing them and you kind of see through them when you look at them every single day. And isn't that just like life, though? When we have a tendency to take for granted the people who make the biggest impact on our life. Maybe for you, it's your mom who you have the quickest trigger with. She loves you the most, and that's who you have the quickest trigger with. Maybe it's your wife who has a tendency to drive you up a wall, but if you went without her for a week, you'd be lost. That's Nikola Jokic to the Denver Nuggets. And I say the Rocky Mountain 
uh, uh, the Rocky Mountains themselves because I, I'm, I'm driving down the road this past week. And we have this big road. If you're not from here, it's it's Arapaho Road. It's a you know a main kind of artery road uh, in Colorado, and I travel it every day on my way to work. And after a snowfall, you can see the different crevices of the mountain range to a degree that's like stunning and staggering. And I've made a promise to myself years ago, just it, it, to myself internally, like don't ever take that for granted. The Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains are the land version of the Pacific Ocean. It, it, you, you, you just look at the, the, the size, the massive, the massive nature of them, the vastness of it all, and it's just, it will leave you slack-jawed. It's stunning. And when you're not from here, maybe like someone like me, I think I appreciate it um, just as much and maybe more as someone who is from here. Because I know what it's like to not have that in my day-to-day life. And that is Nikola Jokic. Because this guy has been playing at such a high level for so long that we can have a tendency to see 29 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, and 3 steals from a center on over 61% shooting and say, oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that's just, the, that's just the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, they're, they're always there. They're there every day. They've been there for a million years. They'll be there for another million I don't want to do that with Nikola Jokic because what Denver sports fans are living in right now, it's the golden age of Denver Nuggets basketball. Before this guy hit his prime, the Nuggets had never even been in the finals. And now they're champions and expected to do it again. And he's on the verge of being the ninth player in NBA history to win his third MVP, joining the likes of Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Wilt Chamberlain, Moses Malone. It's 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 insane. These are the good old days that you will tell your kids or your grandkids or a new friend 25 years from now. These are the good old days. So keep your eye on the ball and appreciate them, even with the regularity that we get these stunning performances from Nikola Jokic. Okay, I wanted to get that off my chest. Just been thinking about it a lot. Um, again, with, 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 with a, uh, a repurposed analogy uh, over the years that I've used with Jokic, but it snowed this past week, so it's on my mind again. Um, Christian Brown is playing great basketball. Uh, he's fun to watch right now. He is, uh, we've talked about Christian a lot here um, this season, and for a while it was about how Christian Brown took a step back, and now he has taken a step forward from that place and then maybe an additional step forward to the place where we thought he could be at before the season started. 17 points, five rebounds, two assists against Memphis. 17 points, eight rebounds, six assists and a block with three steals against Portland on Saturday night. I mean, it's it's the two best scoring outputs from Christian in back-to-back um, nature this season, and it's not even particularly close. Christian is flying around. He is an irritant defensively, and because he is has narrowed his focus and kept the main thing the main thing, like remember why I'm out here, it's not to try to improve my game and explore my game, tinker with my game, and I'm talking about offensively, uh, on the fly. That's not why I'm out here. I have to re- refocus, recenter myself, and since he has done that here in the last I don't know, five weeks, whatever it's been, that the stuff that he was trying to do is actually coming along anyway. And that's what happens when you respect the game. The basketball gods kick back that dividend to you um, in a way that we're seeing right now from Christian. And I just absolutely love to see it. Um, uh, Oh, I forgot to mention this with Jokic odds, and I'm just checking my phone. Jokic, for the MVP, guys, is, as of this past week, was minus 700, meaning that if you want to bet Nikola Jokic this past week to win the MVP and you threw $100 down on it and he went on to win, you know how much you would get uh, paid back in your your winnings with a $100 bet this past week, Nikola Jokic MVP? You know how much you would win? $14.29. That's where we're at with the league's MVP. It's done. It's a wrap. Okay, he's already hit the minimum required games. He is galloping to the finish line like one of his Serbian horses. And that was last week. You know what it is this week? Can't find it on certain apps. They've taken it down because there's nothing to gain for these uh, sports books 
other than take small losses on people being super heavy-handed with a thing that's going to happen. DraftKings still has it up. You know what it is? Minus 1,000. You know what that means? You put $100 on Jokic win the MVP, your winnings is $10. You put $10 on it, it's $1. In order to win $100, you would need to a wager $1,000. That's how much of a runaway favorite um, Jokic is for, for league MVP. Um, guys, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Uh, I hope you are having as good of a Tuesday or a week as the Denver Nuggets have had since the All-Star break. Just a legendary run. Guys, they're the number one seed now. We knew this was going to, like, it was almost inevitable, all right? And I had to take six weeks ago that the Denver Nuggets, and I said this on the radio show, I might have said it here, the Denver Nuggets, I said six weeks ago, are going to finish with the number one seed, and Jokic is going to finish as unanimous MVP. It's only happened one time ever. Okay, Steph Curry. All right, I think Jokic has an opportunity to, to, to do that uh, this year. With no secondary all-star, how do you get the number one seed with not even a, number, uh, a, a, a player that's an all-star, a second player? Well, that guy has to just, just be great, and he is. And I think he's going to get 90% of the votes. Maybe there'll be some dissenting votes holding out for SGA. Don't know. Don't care. Jokic is going to win the MVP. Add it up. That's what it's going to equal. Okay. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Um, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, best way to grow this podcast is by word of mouth. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to it. Guys, if you're listening on Spotify, rate it. Give us five stars if you think we deserve it. Um, uh, 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 don't forget to turn the alerts on to the YouTube channel so you never miss a video. Leave a comment. Love seeing it. Uh, again, next game for the Denver Nuggets. Wednesday evening on ESPN against the Phoenix Suns. I'm assuming everyone's going to play for that. Phoenix is just a sort of a, a middling team. Um, you know, they're 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 13 games over 500. Um, they're 19 and 16 on the road. But you look at where they stand in the Western Conference playoff picture. They're in the eighth seed right now. So, um, you know, um, we'll see what it looks like Wednesday night. And then whatever happens on Wednesday night, we're going to turn around and be talking about it on Thursday right here. 